the difference between a land trust and a toady. The, the underlying concept of the avoidance of probate is the same for both. You put the property into a land trust and you name yourself as beneficiary and you name your kid as successor beneficiary. When you pass away, the successor beneficiary can direct the trustee to convey the property to the successor beneficiary or keep it in the trust or whatever they want to do. It takes it out of probate for purposes, for probate purposes. It's a non-probatable asset because the owner is not the legal title holder anymore of the property. The land trust is. We all know that. We've all taken estates and trusts. The toady has the same benefit in the fact that it takes the property out of the probate process. The difference between the two is that in a land trust, you are not the legal title holder to the property anymore. So there's an additional benefit to a land trust, and that is the, protection, the limited protection from creditors. If, you are, if you're the owner of the property, you put it in the land trust and you are personally sued, they can't go after the house because you don't own it, the trust does. Yes, there are ways that they can break that and I have fought a bunch of those with the city where there have been city liens for properties and land trusts. Um, but in general, that's, a, that's an additional protection. That does not occur in a toady because you are still the owner of the property until death. On the other hand, having your property in a land trust can make it a little bit more difficult in certain circumstances to refinance the property, to convey the property, particularly if you put the property into the land trust and you name yourself and your kid as the beneficiaries, as co-beneficiaries, not beneficiary and successor beneficiary. If, if mom does that and she names herself and son as beneficiaries and then tries to sell, the trustee has the right, because they have a fiduciary duty, to both beneficiaries say, hey, you can't sell this property and move to Florida because we have to protect both beneficiaries. In a toady, none of that applies because she's still the owner and putting the toady, naming the beneficiary does not do anything to affect her current ownership of the property. So she can do a toady today and sell it tomorrow if she wants. And then finally, um, it doesn't affect her ability to refinance, to lease, things like that. Whereas if it wasn't a land trust, that may be a concern. And then finally, finally, <laughs> if you go and put your property in a land trust and you go to say Chicago Title and Trust, they're gonna charge a fee Annually. to set it up and to maintain it. And it's usually about 125 bucks a year. The toady, the only cost is the cost of drafting it and by law, only the individual homeowner can draft her own toady or a lawyer can draft it. A trust company and a, a non-attorney estate planner, a real estate broker, they are not allowed to draft a toady. It has to be a lawyer or pro se. And once, so the cost of drafting it for those, if you were doing this in private, of course we're doing it pro bono here at LAF, the only other cost is the cost of recording which again is about 50 or 55 bucks depending on whether it's two or three pages. That's it. There's no ongoing cost. So the long-term expense of a toady is significantly less than the long-term expense of a land trust.